this video is going to be our first video where we're going to look at solving trig equations. So our goal here is to solve trig equations, and they're going to be fairly basic here as we work through these uh, couple videos of trig equations 1, 2, and 3. So for the first one here, I want to review a little bit um, of an idea from algebra. And that is the difference between the square root of 25, just that expression, and the equation x squared equals 25. Now, if we just have the square root of 25, that just equals 5. A single answer. Because it's an expression, you can only do equal to one thing. When I have an equation and I take the square root, I get more than one answer, and I get plus or minus 5. So an expression, this is an expression, there's no equal sign, just a mathematical expression. You can only get one answer. When you have an equation, you can get two or more solutions. So let's look at inverse sine of one half. If we think unit circle a second, that is what angle on the unit circle has a y coordinate of one half and we know for sine that answer and I'll go degrees here to help us out is 30 degrees however if I have the equation that sine of theta is one half I'm now solving an equation and I'm finding all of the points where sine is one half not just pi over six but also 5 pi over 6. I can get more than 1. Now in terms of the inner circle, or in terms of the graph, we can have even more than only 2. That's kind of the difference we're looking at here. So let's start looking at sine. Here's the graph of sine. So this is my equation of sine of x. And we know our period is 0 to 2 pi, 0 to 360. And I want to find where is sine equal to 1 half. So I'll use this line to come down. And where that green line intersects the blue line, those are all of the points where sine is 1 half. So sine is 1 half here, and here, and here, and here and here and if I kept going sine would be equal to one half at an infinite number of points but instead of this initially here eventually we'll talk about it dealing with an infinite number of points we only want to look at solutions on our zero to two pi our one period so we're going to look at the question where does sine of x equal one half on zero to 360 that means where this red line is on our graph, which we have two places. Those are also the same two places that we get on our unit circle. So to help us with this, we're going to draw a picture a lot on these of our unit circle to help us find our solutions. So where is sine equal to one half? So if we think our unit circle, that was a pretty bad unit circle. Let's try drawing that circle again. Draw a unit circle. Sine is one half is the y coordinate is one half. So I have two angles here and here. Now we want to use degrees because it's on zero to 360. So I get my answers are 30 and 150. Try another one. Cosine. Square root of 3 over 2. So think of our unit circle. Square root of 3 over 2. Sine or cosine is the x. So that's over here. So I have one point here. One point here. So my theta is 30. That is this angle. And then 330. Tangent is 1 over square root of 3. Now we know 
That's going to be where our unit circle value is only right now. To get that, I need 1 half square root of 3 over 2. So that's y over x. So if I think of my unit circle, what points have a y coordinate of 1 half and an x coordinate of square root of 3 over 2? So square root of 3, 1 half would be right here. And then they also could both be negative. So that's going to be over here. So my answers are going to be 30 and 210. And once again, I would say do these with your unit circle in front of you. Let your unit circle help you understand how to solve these. Now, let's say we want to find the answer from 0 to 2 pi. Not much different, except now we're looking at radians. Negative square root of 2 over 2. That's over here and over here. So that is going to be, now we've got to give radians. So up there, 3 pi over 4. The one in the third quadrant is 5 pi over 4. So it's no different than what we did with degrees, except now we've got to write our answer in terms of radians. That's it. Now, let's talk about all solutions. If we go back here and we say we don't want to just find on 0 to 360, we want to find all places sine is 1 half. So if we go and draw our picture again, we said, well, it was here, 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 here here, and then there'd be other places if we kept going. So it's an infinite number. How do we write all infinite? Well, let's look at let's look at our 0 to 2 pi. If I take this first solution right here, which is pi over 6, 30 degrees, and I go from that solution forward one period, 2 pi, I get another solution. And then if I would go that same distance forward again, I get another solution. And if I would do that same distance forward again, I would get another solution. If I go back 2 pi, there's a solution. If I would go back another 2 pi, there's another solution. So all of these solutions are all 2 pi away. So if I look at my answers, I have pi over 6. And every time I add and subtract 2 pi, I get another solution. Or if I would subtract 2 pi. But if I just write 2 pi, that only gives me the next one. What about the next one and the next one? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to write this as 2 pi n. Now, as we go forward, we're not going to write this. But the idea here is where n is an integer. Now, n is an integer, so what does that mean? It's numbers like negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. So it's all those numbers. So you pick any of those numbers and put it here. If n is 1, that's pi over 6 times 2 pi, which is my next solution. If n is 2, this is pi over 6 plus 4 pi. That's the next solution. If n is negative 1, I would go back. So this is a way to label every single solution that is 2 pi away. Now I get my other solution, which is 5 pi over 6. And I do the same thing, plus 2 pi n. 
Now, we could also do this in degrees and say 60 plus 360N and 150 plus 360N. I don't care which way you do it when you're writing all solutions. So let's look at another one. Sine, cosine, square root of 3 over 2. So first let's solve this unit circle. Sine square root of 3 over 2 is here. So we get this point. We get this point. So our two answers are, uh, I'm going to go with radians, pi over 6, 11 pi over 6. And then I add 360, not 360, I am in radians, so I add 2 pi n plus 2 pi n. And there are my answers. Now, sometimes we'll have an equation that looks like this. 2 cosine theta minus 1. So what we have to do is we have to solve it so we just have sine or cosine so we can solve it like our other equations. So I need to rewrite this as cosine of one half. Once I get cosine of one half, now I can think unit circle, cosine's x, I get a point here, I get a point here, we're on zero to two pi, so I'm in radians, pi over three and five pi over three. So sometimes you got to do a little bit of work to get it where you can solve it. Here's one. Cosine plus square root of 2 minus negative cosine. So if I bring the cosine over, I get 2 cosine of x. I'm going to subtract the square root of 2. Divide by 2. And then I get minus square root of 2 over 2. So once again, draw our picture. That's over here. And so my answers are, they want it degrees, 135, 225. So some of these require a little bit of work before you can just um, solve them. you got to get sine, cosine, or secant by itself. Now the secant is a little different. It's hard to know secant, but we know secant is 1 over cosine. Now, if we think of this as 1 over cosine equals 2 over 1, all I can do is I can just flip both sides. And I can reduce this to cosine of 1 half. And then we've already done cosine of 1 half a second ago there. So what you have to do for all these problems is you want to get them to where you end up with just sine, just cosine, or just tangent equals something that we can solve. 3 secant squared minus 4. Well, if I get secant squared x equals 4 thirds, I can flip both sides, which gives me cosine squared is 3 over 4. Now to solve, i got to take the square root of both sides, which would give me cosine equals plus or minus the square root of 3, but the square root of the bottom is 2. So now when I go to write my answers, now I'm not sure we degrees or radians, we're in degrees. If I think of my unit circle, I want the x coordinate to be square root of 3 over 2. So I have this answer and this one. But I also want it to be negative square root of 3 over 2. So I want those two answers. So I actually have four answers. 30, 150, 210, and 330. So all of these problems come down to just getting sine, cosine, or tangent by themselves and then determining what points from the unit circle. That is uh, trig equations number one. You can now do the homework.